Alright, in this video I'm going to do a couple examples of solving some quadratic equations by factoring. And in our first example here we've got x squared minus 9x plus 14 equals 0. And again, the basic idea is uh, we're trying to factor first off. So one thing that's important is you want your one side of the equation to be equal to 0. So notice we have that in our first example. We don't have that in our second example, so that's actually something that we'll have to do first in that problem. But in this one, it is set equal to zero, so to me that's, that's good. And again, since the coefficient on the x squared is a one, if it factors at least you know, nicely with whole numbers, I think to get the x squared, I would need an x and an x. And then again, I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to positive 14, but add up to negative nine. So, you know, I'm thinking about factors of 14 in my head, so, you know, 1 and 14, well, I don't see how I can, you know, add or subtract or do anything with that to get a negative 9, so I don't think that pair is going to work. Well, 2 and 7, I can multiply those together to get positive 14, so, and, hey, you know, 2 and 7, if I add those, right now I would get positive 9, but if we make them both negative, so negative 2 and negative 7, those still multiply to positive 14, but now they'll give us the correct sign in the middle. So the way I think about it, if the, if the whole number, if the number is positive, they either have to be both positive or both negative. Whatever the sign on the middle is, if it's negative, that's what they'll both have to be. Okay, so we use negative 2 and negative 7 equals 0. Okay, so the point of having this factored um, is now you know, again, you're trying to, uh, we want to figure out some value for x, so if we plug it into the first set, and then we plug it into the second set, when we multiply those two resulting numbers, we want to get zero out, but if you multiply two numbers and get zero out, it has to be true that at least one of those two numbers is zero. Not that x is zero, but at the end of the day, when you do the arithmetic, you have to get zero inside the parentheses. So what that tells me to do is, it says, well, really we either want to make x minus 2 equal to 0. We want that to work out and be 0. Or we'd have to take what's in the second set of parentheses, x minus 7, and set that equal to 0. So this is the idea. You factor, you take you know, each set of parentheses, set it equal to 0, and then try to solve that equation. So in, both in the first case, we can just add 2 to both sides. We'll get x equals positive 2. We can add 7 to both sides on the second one and get x equals 7. And now we have our two solutions to this quadratic equation. Again, a quadratic equation can have exactly two solutions, or it can have exactly one solution, or it can have no solutions at all. I think both of my examples have two solutions. So, all right, 2x squared minus 5x um, equals 3. So again, the first thing we're going to have to do is make one side equal to zero. A big common mistake, so this is something you don't, you know, don't want to do. A common mistake is people will say, oh, you know, well, they'll just go ahead and start factoring. And they'll say, hey, there's an x, you know, present in both of these terms. So let's factor the x out. And then we have, uh, I guess it would be 2x minus 5. If you distribute that, you'll get 2x squared minus 5x equals 3. And then they'll take each little part and say, well, either x has to equal 3 or 2x minus 5 has to equal 3. And then they'll solve this for x. So they'll add 5 and get 2x equals 8 and divide by 2 and get x equals 4. And that is very bad because what you're saying now is you're saying if you have some number multiplied by another number, by making this statement you're saying, well, either the first set of parentheses has to be the number 3, or at the end of the doing the arithmetic, what's in the second set of parentheses has to equal 3. And again, that's just not true. You can certainly multiply two numbers together where neither of them is 3, but at the end you do get 3 as the answer. So that just, if you think about it, you know, this at all doesn't make any sense to do, okay? Again, when it's equal to zero, to me it makes perfect sense to 
be able to break them down into these two individual equations. So I think that's something kind of important to think about because, again, then you're not memorizing some arbitrary procedure. You're kind of, you're understanding it at that point, why, why it is what it is. Okay, so in the first example, again, we want to make one side equal to zero. So I'm simply going to subtract three from both sides. We'll get 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 equals 0. And now to me this is a little tedious because this coefficient of a 2 in front of the x squared, we have to be more careful when we factor. I think this is one I could almost do by trial and error though. You could always do factoring by grouping. Um, but I'm going to just try to trial and error it. So to me the only way to get the 2x squared, at least using whole numbers, I definitely need an x and an x to get x squared. I'm going to have to have a 2 and a 1 to get the 2. Okay, fair enough. To get negative 3, I'm either going to have to use positive 1 and negative 3 or uh, positive 3 and negative 1. Again, if I'm using whole numbers. And, you know, in my head I just start kind of playing with them. So, you know, because again, I have a choice also of where they go, but I think if we put the minus 3 out here and the plus 1 inside, I think this is going to work because we'll get our 2x squared. Notice 2x and negative 3 will give us our negative 6x, and then we'll get plus 1x, which will give us negative 5x, and then we still get our negative 3. So again, you know, try factoring by grouping if you don't like this method. Um, certainly there's other ways to solve these equations as well, but again, we're talking about factoring here. So same idea, I take each little set of parentheses, set it equal to zero, and then I just solve those resulting linear equations in, in these cases. So I would subtract one from both sides on my, on my first equation. So I would get 2x equals negative 1. And then I would divide both sides by 2. And I would get x equals negative 1 half is one of my solutions. For the other one, I would simply add 3 and get x equals positive 3. And I've got my two solutions to that original quadratic equation.